I hope everybody had a great festive holiday season. Uh, we're ready to begin our first meeting of 2009. Um, this Planning Commission meeting has been called to order. The meeting has been properly noticed and posted in compliance with the open meeting law. We're live on KCLV Channel 2, and this meeting will be rebroadcast Saturday at 10 a.m., the following Monday at midnight, Tuesday at 5 a.m., and again Thursday at 6 p.m. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes. Chair Goins. Present. Commissioner Evans. Present. Commissioner Quinn. Commissioner Trowbridge. Here. Commissioner Truesdale. Present. Commissioner Ellsworth. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'd like to call your attention to the information printed in your agenda concerning our actions and appeal and review process, if appropriate. Please read this information carefully, and if you have any questions, staff is available. Also, the second page of the agenda contains our rules of conduct. We appreciate you adhering to these rules so we can have a smooth meeting. Thank you. I'd like to have a motion for approval of the minutes from the December 4, 2008 Planning Commission meeting. So moved. Motion on the floor. Please cast your votes. Okay. Are there any items at this time any commissioners would like to pull from the consent or I'm the sorry, Commissioner Goins, I wasn't there. I needed to abstain on that vote. Can we revote, please? I we'll just note that. that. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. That you were across the pond, I think. <laughs> Would anybody like to have any um, items pulled off the agenda this evening? One motion or consent? Seeing none, we'll move yep. on to the housekeeping items. Mr. Chairman, we'd like to pull item number 19 from the one motion, one vote. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in housekeeping, uh, item number 16, the applicant has requested that this item be held in abeyance till the March 12, 2009 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 20, the applicant has requested this item be held in abeyance to the February 12, 2009 Planning Commission meeting. <laughs> Items number 27 and 28, the applicant has requested this item be held in abeyance to the March 12, 2009 Planning Commission meeting. Items 32 and 33, the applicant has requested this item be held in abeyance to the January 22nd Planning Commission meeting. And item number 41, the applicant has requested items be held in abeyance till the February 12, 2009 Planning Commission meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So off the public hearing, that was items 27, 28, 32, 33, and 41. 16 and 20 as well. 16 and 20. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion to accept the uh, abeyance withdrawal request as written to the record? So moved. Motion on the floor. Please cast your vote. Commissioner Quinn, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, was, was this the proper time to ask for item 44 to be held as well, Peter? Our Commissioner, Chairman Goins. Just don't call me late for dinner. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, yes, it is appropriate time. Okay. Uh, I State your name and address for the record, please. James Grindstaff, 9440 West Sahara Avenue, representing uh, the the applicant, Bo or the landowner, Boca Park. Uh, the item here is, and I've given the staff the letter, the item here is in violation of the uh, both the OEA, the original sales and purchase agreement for the land and the development agreement between the city of Las Vegas and Boca Park. So I wish that that item to be pulled at the very minimum uh, delayed so that we can discuss the item between the applicant, uh, the city, and ourselves. Well, Thank wait, you. Wait, 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 if I may. Uh, Director Wheeler. Um, are you indicating that the owner did not sign the... the uh, no, I am indicating that the owner signed it. This was one of the pads that we sold. It's a sold pad. However, as part of this purchase and sales agreement of this old pad, they agree to they have to agree to the OEA, the Operations and Easements Agreement. Okay. As part of that agreement attached is also the development agreement that was entered into between the City of Las Vegas and Boca Park Marketplace, of which it states uh, Section 1.4 of that agreement states that the any applicant, including for a sold pad, must. Uh, come to the Design Review Committee for Boca Park Marketplace prior to any applications being received and put in towards the, to the if, city. If I may, Chairman, 
um, this is not the applicant and the owner has authorized the application, so there's no standing for a request to obey. Rather, these are comments he wishes to make on the item itself. Chairman, I would concur with that. Okay. Okay, thank you. So that indicates we'll go ahead and, and do the item and, and hear it. Okay. And, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that concludes our housekeeping. We'll move on to our consent items. Uh, consent items six through eight. Um, they are considered routine by the Planning Commission and may be reenacted re by one vote. However, any item may be discussed if a commissioner or member or applicant so desires. Is there anybody who would like to discuss any of our consent items? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent items, items 6, 7, and 8. So moved. Motion on the floor. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. All items are final action in the absence of an appeal. We'll move on to our one motion, one, um, one, motion, one vote items. Uh, they are the following items that may be considered in one motion, one vote. They are considered routine, non-public, and public hearing items. All public hearing and non-public hearing items will be opened at one time. Any person representing an application or a member of the public or a member of the Planning Commission not in agreement with the conditions and all standard conditions for the application recommended by staff should request to have that item removed from this part of the agenda. Um, we will be, I'll be reading in items 9 through 15, 17, 18, and 20. Item 9, ZON 32101, applicant owner Las Vegas Valley Water District from R1 single family residential to CV Civic at 110 North Torrey Pines Drive. Item 10, ZON 32102, applicant owner Las Vegas Valley Water District from RE residential estates to CV Civic at 4205 West Bonanza. Item 11, ZON 32103, applicant owner Las Vegas Valley Water District from RE Residential Estates to CV Civic at 4501 West Bonanza Road. Item 12, ZON 32104, applicant owner Las Vegas Valley Water District request for rezoning from R1 single family residential to CV Civic on 0 0.24 acres at 5927 Smoke Ranch Road. Item 13, SUP 31893, applicant owner, Ad America, Inc., for a proposed 40-foot tall, 14 by 48-foot off-premise sign billboard at 2310 Western Avenue. Item 14, SUP 32016, applicant, the Indian Gourmet Curry Bowl, Inc., owner, owner Centennial Gateway, LLC, for a beer, wine, cooler, on-sale establishment within a proposed restaurant at 5643 Centennial Center Boulevard, Suite 130. Item 15, SUP 32134, applicant, Heaven Can Wait Sanctuary, owner, AMAX Enterprises, LLC, for a proposed animal hospital, clinic, or shelter with no outside pins at 546 North Easton Avenue, Suites 170 and 175. Item 17, applicant, Lamar Out Advertising, uh, owner, Hal Stan, Inc., Required review of an approved special use permit U0038-95 for a 40-foot tall, 14 by 48-foot off-premise sign billboard at 3500 North Rancho. Item 18, RQR 31586, applicant Clear Channel Outdoor Owner Storage Equities. Required review for an approved special use permit U0159-89 for a 55-foot tall, 14 by 48-foot off-premise sign billboard at 275 South Martin Luther King Boulevard. Those are the one motion, one vote uh, as read into the record. I'd like to have a motion for approval of those subject to all standard recommendations and conditions. So moved. Motion on the floor for one motion, one vote. Please cast your vote. And that motion has been approved. And all those matters go forward to council on February 4th, 09. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to our public hearing items, I'm going to... Um, oh, pardon me. Let's pull item up 19, please. Is there an applicant present? Mr. Chairman, the facility will provide valuable public transportation services for the Northwest Valley to the downtown Las Vegas in an effort to reduce single occupancy vehicle traffic. In addition, the site is in substantial compliance with Title 19 of the Town Center Development Standards Manual with the exception of the requested streetscape waiver, which have been de deemed to be minor in nature. Therefore, staff is recommending approval of the requested site development per plan review. Furthermore, staff would like to amend condition number two as submitted to the clerk, if approved, to read as follows. All development shall be in conformance with the site plan and building elevation date stamped January 6, 2009, and landscape plan date stamped November 25, 2008, except as amended by condition herein. 
as well as amend condition number six as submitted to the clerk if approved to reflect the deletion of the following language from the condition and the continued existence of the north bus stop amenities constru constructed during phase one. Please note a letter of protest has been received after the publishing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Applicant? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jim Lasher here representing the Regional Transportation Commission. We made an original application to the commission on November 25th and followed up with an amended set of building drawings submitted January 6th that I believe are in your packet for review. Mm -hmm. uh, we are consistently submitting the building based on the fact that we did go through a redesign effort during that period and we brought the building forward for your view and comment this evening. I'll answer any questions. Thank you. So you are in um, agreement with the amended conditions number two and number Six. I believe that is correct, yes. That would be correct. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board on item 19? Seeing none. Seeing none, I'm ready to make a motion for approval of item number 19, Site Development Review 32155, subject to all conditions as amended. Thank you. Motion to make. And that motion has passed. And that is Thank final you. action in absence of appeal within 10 days. Thank you very much. I just want to make a clarification on item 20, um, that that is part of the public hearing and not the one motion, one vote. Okay. Yeah. At this time, I'm going to pull items 34, 35, and 36 forward. We could have, um, these are off of our public hearing items. Item 34 is ZON 31384, Applicant Owner City Parkway, Inc., a rezoning to GO Gaming Enterprise Overlay, implementing a gaming enterprise district south, district southeast of City Parkway and Grand Central Parkway. Um, item 35, SUP 32617, applicant um, Forest City, same applicant, a request is for a 592-foot high building where 175 feet is the maximum height allowed in the airport overlay district. Item 36, SDR 32128, uh, for a 1,600,000 square foot, 47 story hotel and non restricted gaming establishment. Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission, Flynn Fagg with the Planning Department. I have a couple of items that I would like to clarify and enter into the record. First of all, relative to the advertising that has been done for the applications, I'd like to go to the overhead if I could. Just to clarify, for the rezoning application, the uh, notification area for that application is 2,500 feet. Excuse me, I've got the wrong map up there. The notification area on that application is 2,500 feet. I just want to clarify that we did notify all property owners within 2,500 feet of the parcel, and we are going to submit into the record a copy of the notification map and also <coughs> the names and addresses of all property owners within the affected area who were notified of this application. The associated applications, the special use permit and the site development plan review have a different standard for notification in accordance with the city code. We have notified property owners within a thousand feet of the parcels that are relative to those two applications. The map that ha you have on the overhead there shows the notification radius and we will also be submitting the list of property owners, their names and addresses into the record with these applications just to clarify any issues that there might be with our notification process. In addition, what I would like to do is to submit into the record the supplement which has the backup information relative to uh, the application itself and what we used in terms of determining conformance with um, the NRS requirements and also our Title 19 requirements and we are going to submit that into the record this evening for the clerk as well. In terms of the applications, zoning application ZON 31384 relative to the gaming overlay, staff finds that the application is consistent with the requirements of Title 19 and also the requirements of NRS in terms of separation from protected properties. The associated applications, the special use permit and the site development plan review applications, relative to the special use permit, we find that the application was filed relative to 
the airport overlay district in conformance with code requirements, and then on the site development plan review application, we find that the application is generally consistent with the Union Park development standards. The application has been reviewed by the Union Park Design Review Committee. You have in your packet a copy of the letter relative to their recommendation and approval of the project. We have incorporated their conditions into the conditions of approval for this application, and so consequently staff would recommend approval of the zoning application, the special use permit, and the site development plan review, finding them consistent with our codes and regulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. We'll turn it over to our city attorney, Mr. <laughs> Brad Jervis. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. The uh, Brad Jurek appearing on behalf of City Parkway for the applicant. I think Mr. Fiorentino is also here. Excuse me, not the applicant, the landowner. And Mr. Fiorentino is also here on behalf of the applicant for City. These uh, gaming enterprise districts are a rare creature. You probably have not seen one before. If you have, you, you see them very seldom. State law prescribes a very del difficult and deliberate procedure before a property can be made eligible for unrestricted gaming. Uh, as you heard from Mr. Flynn when he gave, or, or Mr. Flynn when he gave his presentation, uh, this property is eligible for inclusion in the Gaming Enterprise District because it meets the separation requirements from churches and schools and the like. In addition, the Nevada Revised Statutes require, uh, by clear and convincing evidence, a number of findings. All of those are contained in your staff report on page FF. Uh, and I'll just summarize them briefly. Uh, they involve finding that the road, water, sanitation, utilities, and related services are adequate. Proposed establishment will not unduly impact public services. Consumption of natural resources and quality of life enjoyed by residents. Proposed establishment will enhance, expand, and stabilize employment in the local economy. The proposed establishment will be located in an area planned or zoned for that pursuant to NRS. And finally, that the proposed establishment will not be detrimental to the health, safety, or general welfare of the community. That's why you have uh, this extraordinary amount of material presented to you tonight uh, as prepared uh, by Mr. Fiorentino's firm. Uh, behind each tab in this uh, document is supporting evidence which will meet the requirements of NRS 463, uh, I think, by clear and convincing evidence. The, um, I think everything else pretty much speaks for itself. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have, and with that, I will submit it. Thank you very much. This is a public hearing. We'll open the public hearing for anybody who'd like to speak for or against this item. Please come forward. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, thank you very much. I'm Mark Fiorentino. As Mr. Jervik just said, I'm here representing the applicant for city uh, tonight. I actually had a brief presentation, but anything I said would be um, duplicative of what uh, Mr. Jervik and your staff just said. So we're here to also to answer any questions that you have. Um, we obviously have reviewed the staff reports and recommendations on all three applications in detail. Uh, agree with them um, and accept all of the conditions that are, are listed in there and we're asking for you to uh, recommend approval of all three but would be happy to join in the discussion and answer any any questions that, that you might have thank you again the public hearing is open if anybody would like to speak for or against this item please come forward seeing none we'll close the public hearing comments or questions from the board mr. Truesdale with uh, we're going to take the SDR as well yes sir Okay. With regards to the SDR, um, does the I mean it's an, a very attractive building concept, and the tower appears to bow out. Does that meet all the requirements of the um, Parkway Center design guidelines? Uh, I'll go ahead and address that if you all don't mind, Flynn Fag, with the Planning Department. The project has been reviewed by the Union Park Design Review Committee. In terms of conformance with design regulations, yes, it does conform to the regulations. Uh, it's a very unusual building. We will admit that, but uh, again, it is in conformance with the standards. Thank you. Th those are my concerns. Thanks. Thank you. Vice Chairman Trowbridge? No other uh, discussion. I'm ready to make a motion. So moved. Okay. After a uh, review of the, um, the application and its indication that it meets all the applicable municipal code as well as re revised statutes and after consideration of all the uh, agenda material and all the, the attachments that we've been provided, which we appreciate um, and this evening's testimony appreciated and uh, in consideration of the staff uh, findings regarding the specific issues that needed to be addressed, I'd make a motion for uh, the approval of this project that's been in the mill work for almost 10 years and it's uh, intended to be a, a vibrant part of the development of the 61 acres and we look forward to the development of this project. So 
My motion is to approve. Item number 34, zoning 31384. If I may, please, are there any changes to any conditions? No, thank you. Summit all conditions. Motions on the floor for approval of item 34. Please cast your votes. And that motion has passed. Item 35. In regards to special use permit 23617, make a recommendation for approval subject to all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval of item 35. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. Item 36. Uh, site development review 32128, make a recommendation for approval subject to all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval of item 36, please cast your votes. And that motion is passed as well. All matters go forward to City Council on February 4th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you very Thank much you for your courtesy pulling it forward tonight and Happy New Year to you Thank all. Thank you. We'll move to item 21 and 22, which are related items. Item 21 is GPA 31296, applicant owner, City of Las Vegas, from low density residential to PF public facility at 194 Upland Boulevard. Also, zoning matter 31277 from R1 single family residential to CV Civic. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this site has been utilized as a fire station since 1963. Uh, the general plan amendment and zoning will bring uh, the, the use into conformance with the general plan and the zoning, and staff recommends approval. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anybody like to speak for or against this item, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the board? If not, we'll entertain a motion on item 21 and then 22. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion for approval of uh, GPA 31296 with all staff's recommendations. Motion on the floor for approval of item 21. Please cast your votes. And following that. Uh, One moment, Commissioner Quinn. Yeah. And that motion has passed. Item 22. Motion for approval of uh, zoning uh, 31277 with all staff's recommendations, please. Motion on the floor for approval of item 22. Please cast your vote. Thank you. So that motion has passed. Both matters go to council February 4th. Items 23 and 24 are related items. Item 23 is GPA 32099, applicant owner Las Vegas Valley Water District from low, medium, density to residential to PF public facility at 901 South Jones Boulevard. Item 24, ZON 32100 from R1 single family residential to CV Civic. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, once again, this is a site that's been utilized as a, uh, a well site or a pump station by the water district for many, many years, and this will bring the zoning and general plan. Uh, in the conformance with the current use, staff recommends approval of both items. Thank you. Applicant? Uh, Ryan Pearson, uh, 1001 South Valley View Boulevard, here on behalf of the applicant. We really don't have much to add to what staff said. So you in agreement with all conditions on yeah. both items? Yep. Thank you. Yes, sir. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience wanting to speak for or against this item? Please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on item 23 and 24. I'd like to make a motion for approval of GPA uh, 32099 with all staff's recommendations. Motion on the floor for approval of item 23. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. Item 24. I'd like to also make a motion for approval of zoning 32100 with all staff's recommendations and thank you. Motion on the floor for approval of item 24. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. Both okay. matters go forward to council on February 4th. Mr. Pearson, we did have a, uh, just a little FYI, we had a concern from a, a nonprofit that's in the area and uh, they hadn't been contacted by the water district so we told them that if they came to your front door, you would open it with open arms and address all their concerns, and I think it's very, very minimal. Absolutely. We, we will get anything that uh, any concerns will address with. with Thank you. You may get a visit from a gentleman named Mr. Klein. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Items 25 and 26. Item 25, GPA 32129. Apps. Oh, these are separate apps. Item 
25 GPA 32129 applicant owner Gateway Motel from MXU Mixed Use to C Commercial at 928 South Las Vegas Boulevard. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this site is currently split uh, land use. This will bring the uh, parcel into compliance with one la land use upon it, which is in conformance to the uh, plans and goals of uh, the general plan, and staff recommends approval. Thank you. Applicant? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners John Vorenson, 2657 Windmill Parkway Henderson, representing the application. This is a prerequisite uh, to submitting for a site development plan review. We'll be before you in the near future uh, with a request for a Holiday Inn Express at this intersection, and we'd agree with all staff recommendations. Thank you very much. This is a public hearing. Anybody in the audience want to speak for or against item 25, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on item 25. We can make a motion in regards to item number 25, general plan amendment 32129, make a recommendation for approval, subject to all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval. Please cast your vote. Commissioner Quinn? Yes. There's a motion for approval on item 25. Please cast your vote. Yes votes for the approval. Thank you. And that motion has passed. Thank you. Thank you. forward to council February 4th. Item 26, GPA 32130, applicant owner, City of Las Vegas, to amend the trails alignment maps of the master plan, transportation trails, and recreation trails element to revise trail alignments. Staff? Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, this is essentially a cleanup item that you have before you. Uh, relative to the transportation trails element, all we're doing is just removing the recreational trails off of that map, and there are no changes to the alignments on that map. On our recreational trails map, there have been some changes to the equestrian trail alignments in the unincorporated Clark County areas, and all we're doing is acknowledging those changes on our map. Um, if any of you have followed the situation in the unincorporated areas of Clark County, they had an equestrian study that was finished in 2007. That resulted in some changes to their trail alignments in 2008. And what we would, are doing this evening is just making our map conform to the changes that they made in their map. Relative to the specific changes, there's just one small segment that we're deleting from the city area, which is just south of the 215. It's an area that no longer aligns with the county trail, and so that's why that is being removed. There are two things that we are adding to the map, and that is overpass crossings on the 215 that has been recommended by both the county and the equestrian group in the northwest, and so we're adding those locations to our map. In addition, we are also making some minor corrections to the inset on our downtown map for the transportation trails, and that is the subject of item number 46 on our agenda. Which, which I'm going to pull forward. Okay. <laughs> and we appreciate that. Uh, where we're just making some uh, minor corrections and cleanups to the trails in the downtown area. We want all of our documents to be consistent relative to the trail alignments, and so that's what these uh, items on the agenda are intended to do. Okay. This is a public hearing. Does anybody in the audience want to speak for or against uh, item 26? Feel free to come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions on item 26? If not, we'll entertain a motion on item 26. With regards to item number 26, general plan amendment 32130, make a recommendation for approval, subject to all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval of item 26. Please cast your vote. Too busy talking. <laughs> Thank you. And that motion has passed. We'll go forward to council February 4th. And we'll move forward to item 46 under director's business, uh, TXT32131, applicant owner of City of Las Vegas to amend the downtown centennial plan to update and revise trail al alignments in the downtown area. Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, this proposed text amendment, as I've already mentioned, is related to the GPA that we just did. Relative to the trails in the downtown area, there's one small segment of the arts trail that we are uh, removing in order to accommodate the RTC, um, their new transportation facility in the downtown area, which will also be coming forward to you at a later point in time. 
And then also one of the things that we're doing is we are adding a segment on the south end of the uh, arts district to, to connect that back to the BRT line and also Las Vegas Boulevard so that we have some connectivity between our transit and our trails in the downtown area. That's the extent of the changes that we're proposing to the trails map in the downtown centennial plan and would request your support of this. Okay, thank you. This item is also a public hearing. Would anybody like to speak for or against this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the board? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a disclosure with regarding to this item and the previous item that I did vote for, that I do own property along this trail system, and but I, it's all part of the transportation effort, and I don't believe anything is affected by that. But if there are concerns, I will abstain. Thank you. No more comments or questions. We'll entertain a motion on item 46. Yes, in regards to item number 46, but before I make the motion, in regards to item number 26, I would uh, mention that I did speak to representatives of the equestrian community, and they're in support of the, the changes that we approved. In regards to item number 46, text amendment 32131, make a recommendation for approval subject to all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval of item 20, 46. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. And that will go forward to council in ordinance form. We'll move on to items 29, 30, and 31, which are related items. Item 29, GPA 32164, applicant owner Christina Stevens from L Low Density Residential to O Office at 2404 East Kirk Avenue. Item 30, ZON 32169 from R1 Single Family Residential to PR Professional Office and Parking. Item 31, SDR 32170 for the proposed office conversion of existing 1,140 square foot single family residence with waivers to allow for a five foot landscape buffer along the north and east perimeter where 15 feet is required and a zero foot landscape buffer along the south and west perimeter where eight feet and five feet respectively are required. Sam? Mr. Chairman, objective 2.2 .2 of the Las Vegas 2020 master plan seek to ensure that low density residential land uses within mature neighborhoods can exist in close proximity to higher density residential mixed use or non-residential land uses by mitigating adverse impacts where feasible. The proposed office general plan designation will allow commercial uses that are more intense than and generally not compatible with the residential uses allowed by the adjacent low density residential land use designation to the north and west. Furthermore, the resulting development will bring commercial attractive traffic and activity into a residential neighborhood without providing adequate buffering to mitigate the adverse impacts on the adjacent residential properties as is evidenced by the requested waivers to allow for reductions and or eliminations of landscape buffers. Therefore, staff has recommended denial of all the proposed land use applications. Please note additional letters of protest and support have been received after the publishing. Thank you. Thank you. Applicant? Good evening. My name is David Rodriguez, uh, 2441 Old Forge Lane, representing uh, Miranda Travel. Uh, I'd like to give you a little uh, background, if I may. Uh, this is uh, basically going to be a, for a travel travel agency. Uh, the, it's a two-lady operation. They are, they're operating right now at uh, 4500 uh, East Bonanza, Suite J. So it would be a, a two-person run run uh, operation. And if you could go to the overhead, I'd like to explain something uh, on, on the site. Uh, this area right here that is, that is, hatched, at, that is hatched out is part of the existing uh, structure right now that uh, they're willing to cut back because they really don't need that much room. Uh, they're willing to cut back the, their structure uh, in order to get the, the flow of traffic, traffic through there. This is a tight, a tight uh, site. Uh, there is a, a, a law office south of, of uh, Kirk on, on, uh, on Eastern. And uh, there's, uh, I think there's also uh, another uh, law office or another uh, business, and I know that that's not a, those are not very highly traffic traffic areas. But um, if you spent one day at their operation, it's basically most of them just come up there and pick up their tickets. All their stuff is basically done over the phone. Uh, the lady that owns this, uh, Miss Stevens. Uh, and, and her partner. It's her. It's her house. Uh, she's been. She's trying to rent it out. She's. No one wants to live right on the corner of uh, Eastern and Kirk. Uh, and in that area, if you go across the street, the house is faced 
west. Okay, so it's really this how no one want you, that, so if you live in the if you live across the street, you're really not into the traffic, and you don't hear, you don't get all that. So people, when she went to go out to to rent this place, people would go up there, and they would they didn't they just didn't like the location. So it's been it's been sitting there, and she figures she owns it. She might as well her apartment might as well try to run their business out of there. So it's like I said, it's a two it's a two uh, uh, two person operation. Did you first say this was going to be a travel agency? Yes, it is. It's okay. going to be a, tra it's going to be a, tra a travel agency. Yeah. Because I'm reading my backup from, there's a justification letter on the SBR. Okay. That, okay um, well, let me finish. Okay. On, on January 8, 2009, and our justification letter says uh, the rezoning would be for an income tax service office. Okay. That was, okay, that that was when, uh, that's, that's, we, that's what we originally went in at, but we didn't. We were at the last minute at trying to apply for the, you know, put the put the package in for the application. Well, you need to be I, clear I call, on the I There's call. a difference between income tax service and, and yeah. travel agency. So, well, if we, if we were going to go for the income tax, they would have gone to an O. We were, we would have been we would have been asking for an O. I got a call from the from the uh, the planning department. We received a, plan, a call from the planning department and said we could put. We initially went in when we went in for our, our pre app meeting. We asked. We asked for the travel agency. That's that's the main thing that wanted to go. They said no. You can't. You, you have to go to the O. You couldn't go to a PR. You had to go to an O. And the O does not allow a travel agency in there. So, but the planning department did call call back and said, you know what? You the uh, there was a miscommunication or something, and they said that uh, that the that the travel agency could go in, in, in the in Well, let me defer to staff to ask, are, are we clear on what the applicant's requesting of whether it be travel agency or income tax office? If I may, while they're checking that out, the one thing that is important here is that whether it's travel agency or income tax or anything else, they could operate that business from this location as long as it was a home occupation without uh, pedestrian traffic coming in and out. In other words, you can do income taxes via the internet and phone and mail and the same with a travel agency as a home business, in which case the general plan amendment rezoning are not necessary. In this case, they wish to do the type of business where there is pedestrian traffic and persons coming and going, and that's why a, text, a general plan amendment and rezoning is necessary, and the SDR is necessary. A uh, PR for a conversion is, could be appropriate at this location because it's an existing home. Um, and again, whether it's travel agency or income tax, I believe that to be the case. Okay. Yes, that you, you're correct, ma'am. Okay. Are you finished your presentation? Well, oh, just just one thing. It's okay. it's not a six. It's it was a sixteen hundred square foot hut. We're, we're we're taking, we are demolishing, we're bringing it down to closer to eleven hundred, not sixteen hundred. But there is an ex the, the the residence that's existing there now is sixteen hundred square feet. Uh, we're we're proposing to take that down to 1,100 square feet to allow for for the traffic to to flow through on the site. So there's nobody parking in the street. Our, our, uh, all the tra all the people would be who come in there would be coming in, and there wouldn't be they wouldn't have people ha hanging out, you know, parking in the streets, uh, disrupting the neighborhood or anything else. Uh, if there's any is there any questions from are you commission? are you done? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak for or against this item? Please come forward at this time. Just please come up and state your name and address for the record. Chairman and Commissioners, my name is Barbara Bodwin. I live at 2400 Kirk Avenue, which is the residence next door to this. Uh, I am in complete opposition of this because the house does not face on Eastern. And several years ago when people tried to rezone, uh, the commissioners told us at that time that no house that had an entrance onto Eastern would be zoned commercial or office. You mean onto Kirk? Yes. Yeah. If, the, Kirk. if the uh, entrance was not on Eastern, 
it would not be rezoned. This is the only house that would be rezoned if it is passed and the rest is neighborhood. Um, the house on McWilliams uh, at 25, uh, 2425 East McWilliams, which is Tingy and Tingy Law Office, the address is on McWilliams, but the entrance does open on to Eastern. And anything past that, going south, all opens on to Eastern, and they are entrances on that street as well. Um, let's see. My house is next door, which is where the entrance and where they would be entering and exiting. They would go to my side of the house, which would be on the west side of this building. My concern is, is I have two bedrooms at that end of the house, and my concern is, is if someone went through the block wall and came into my bedrooms. I mean, I don't spend all my time in the bedroom, but there is that possibility. Um, I don't, I am concerned because if this one house is allowed to go commercial, what is it going to do to my property value as well as the other property value in the neighborhood with just one house being, con being rezoned as a commercial piece of property? Okay. And there is a major traffic, traffic problem at that intersection now, Kirk and Eastern, um, with the cars coming off of Eastern, going up Kirk, going down Kirk to get on to Eastern. And the prior owner of that house ran a business out of that location um, and he, I don't believe he had a business license to do so and there were cars that were parked and I realize Kirk is a public street but there were cars parked in front of my house all the time even blocking my driveway to where I would have to go and ask if they would please move their vehicle so I could get out of my driveway. So I am in complete opposition of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Boy, I got yes, I know. And I, I do My name is Joseph Bodwin, and I'm her husband. Uh, what I would like to say is, is the reason nobody wants to rent this house is because the previous owner totally cemented every inch of that yard, front and back. So there's no really no grass for children to play on. So that's the reason that, that nobody wants to rent this place. Now, I don't believe that they can cut the side of this house off without major reconstruction. I mean, they're going to have to demolish part of this house to rebuild it. And I think this is going to set a precedence. If they allow now someone to come into a residential neighborhood just because they have a corner house, now other people are going to say, hey, I've got a corner house. I'm going to rezone it commercial. And this, it's, just going to, it's just going to snowball. And uh, I just don't want the noise. I don't want the traffic, and I just don't want a business next door to my house. So I, that, that's what I'd like to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead and close the public hearing. It's kind of looking at the pictures there. There's a lot of graffiti on the inside of that wall as well. So, well, the public hearing is closed. Any comments or questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Evans. I'm, I would ask, how long has the... Uh, Owner had this property. Is, is it a recent acquisition? Uh, she's she's here. I like the weeks, uh, months, years. She's here. She's she she, she can answer all, all all the questions. I like to uh, comment on some of the other. Um, around thirteen months. We have with the house. I think you'd have to identify yourself. Say your name. Could you say your name oh, and address I'm for the record. I'm sorry. I am Christina Stevens, and I live in sixty-four seven seven Stromwall Drive. Thank you. Um, just a couple of comments, and maybe the gentleman can, or one of you can um, provide some clarification. Um, I, I understand that Eastern is a, is a difficult place from a residential perspective, but my first question when I read the staff report in the backup was that I, it looked like this property had been prepared for or had previously been operated as a business because I specifically noted the concrete with th surrounding the building. But the staff report, in my opinion, is right on point where it says that unlike other businesses along Eastern, um, this one is oriented toward Kirk and not Eastern, and the access would be off of Kirk, and this would be a residential street. Um, and they talk about the impact on the adjacent residential properties, and my belief is that the people who live next door, across the street, along that street, 
have property rights. They, they bought a home with the expectation that their neighbors were to be residential. And I think this would be uh, an incredible uh, injustice to, to create a professional or commercial office um, with people coming and going from their residential street. And my experience has been that in many cases these have not worked out like we would like them to. The income tax uh, businesses, the travel agencies, the um, various businesses along all these major streets often have strobe lights, neon in the windows, uh, garish signage, people coming and going, and most of them are empty at night, which leaves an opportunity for you know, a, a lot of vandalism. They have not worked well, but specifically because this business would be oriented to Kirk and not Eastern, it, it just won't see my support. Well, talking with, with traffic, the only thing they, they – there's a bus stop that's right, right where Harris Street used to be. And to put a, to put, to put a, a driveway on Eastern uh, would, would be more detrimental to – to the flow of the flow of traffic on Easter, the, the, the southbound traffic on Easter, uh, because of the you have the bus stop, and that's a pretty used bus stop. It's, it's you know it's there's it, it it's right it's right to, uh, it's just south of the property where the old abandoned Harris Street goes through. Um, their oh, their recommendation was we just widen widen the uh, widen the uh, driveway. To uh, make it because it's a small, it's a small, real small. Driveway. But the recommendation of well, the staff is for denial. No, I mean because the drive, they don't uh, feel it's appropriate. My question about when the property was purchased, and I believe the owner said 13 months ago. I'm assuming that it was purchased without the intention of anyone living there, given that it looks like it's been either operated as or intended to operate as a business without the necessary zoning and permitting and that sort of thing. But whenever you bought it, you must have known it's zone residential, and that would be the, you know, the, you knew what it was when you bought it. And, and without the support of your neighbors, I think you'd have a really difficult time getting this approved. And I also agree with the folks who live next door. Um, their lifestyles and their home would significantly impact, be impacted by this, and I suspect it would decrease their property values. They have rights, and I think that without their consent and without the consent of the neighbors, this is not a good application and not a good uh, opportunity for a zone change. I absolutely agree with the staff report, which adamantly recommends denial. Thank you. Thank you. One more question. What are those letters on top of the house? Um. You know, the property is all empty because nobody wants to leave. I put already the sign to rent it off, and the people vandalize the house. No, no, I mean on top of the roof. Yeah, they vandalize. Somebody they, put it there. Well, that's a tagger. No, it's nothing for us. Somebody put it's it graffiti. there. Graffiti. I really graffiti, can't believe yeah, it. Yes, that's it. It's been Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. If you look in your pictures on the back up, it's clearly shown. Wow. Um, no more questions or comments on items. 29, 30, or 31. We'll entertain a motion on item 29. Mr. Chairman, I would follow the recommendation of the staff for denial of the general plan amendment uh, for all the reasons previously stated and is listed in the staff report. Motion on the floor for denial of item 29. Your yes vote is for the denial. Cast your votes. And that is passed. Item 30. Item 30, the zone change, 32169. Uh, once again, the staff report talks about the orientation being on Kirk and not Eastern, and that the impact on the adjacent residential properties would be substantial. Uh, so my motion would be to follow their recommendation for denial. Motion on the floor for denial of item 30. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. Item 31. And lastly, the site development review for the for the same reasons. Uh, my recommendation or my motion rather would be to follow the recommendation for denial of the site development review. Motion on the floor for denial of item 
31. Please cast your votes. And that motion has passed. And that goes forward to City Council on February 4th. Moving on to item 37, VAR 32152, applicant owner Meritage Homes of Nevada, Inc., to allow a five foot rear yard setbacks where 10 feet is required on 85 lots for open patio covers adjacent to the northwest corner of Farm Road and Egan Crest Drive. Staff? Mr. Chairman, the applicant has identified 85 lots in which the potential for prospective buyers to opt for a patio cover option exists. The installation of the patio cover option will precipitate a 50% reduction in the required setback as denoted within the city, uh, the, within Cliff's Edge Master Development Plan and Design Guidelines. Staff cannot support this request as it has been deemed a self-imposed and hardship and therefore is recommended denial of this application. Please note additional letters of protest have been received after the publishing. Thank you. Thank you. Applicant? Patrick Helfrich, uh, representing the applicant, 555. Five West Bedura, Suite 120. Um, we have designed and have approved through the city three additional floor plans for this site, and one of them, one out of the three we have with a minimum rear setback that meets the design criteria for house setback to the rear property line. Uh, we have designed an optional patio cover on the rear for that one particular plan, which is a six-foot depth. The way that this, the Cliff's Edge design guidelines it allowed, would allow for a five foot. So this really what we need is really a one foot variance. Right now Cliff's Edge asked for a 10 foot setback to a rear patio. Uh, when I talked with the design review committee over at Focus, they asked me just to submit the application so that this would match Title 19, which allows for a five foot setback. Um, I've read the staff conditions and if approved, I, we can go with uh, what they have commented here. My only request would be that rather than approval of a final inspection, it would be um, approval or um, issuance of a building permit so that if we come back in two years and ask for an extension, if somebody has picked that one particular plan and they've picked a patio option and we have the building in process, that the condition doesn't expire and all of a sudden we have a house that doesn't have a final on it. Okay. Thank you very much. This is a public hearing. Anybody in the audience want to speak for or against this item, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public comments. Comments from the commission? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the applicant or for staff, in one of the backup documents I'm looking at, it shows this planned patio addition to this one. I guess it's your unit. I want to say 3113. Yeah, that, that's the one particular floor plan out of the three that we have offering there at the moment. In looking at the building envelope for that house, it, it appears that the house is bigger than the envelope out of the gate, but yet it could be you've got a 21 and, or 22 foot driveway. Why not, if you're only really, if we're talking about a foot, why not slide that house forward that foot? Then we, it wouldn't be a self imposed. No, I know what you're talking about on that. That, that was um, presented, that was put together by our engineer, VTN, and I missed looking at the, the, the um, setback deals. We will always have 15, the, the minimum requirement there is an 18 foot driveway. We'll do 18s where we can. If we have to do some offsets, we'll go further back, but 18 is the minimum at the front garage. The rear requirement is 15 foot to the back of the house. We'll always be there or we'll have 16 or 17 feet depending on our um, the depth of the lot. So we'll never we will never ask for anything less than the rear setback to the house. That's going to be 15 or greater. What happens is if we have the house at the 15, then we have a six-foot patio. We're only allowed, that would put us at nine foot from the rear. We're only allowed 10 per the um, design criteria, so we're off by a foot. Um, so the VTN picture that you see in your backup, the, the calculations aren't correct. The, oh, that's well. basically the, the problem with that one. Yeah, I guess... Because if the engineer can't it's, give us correct dimensions, yeah, I it's, mean, it's a little confusing. In that I apologize. I'm but, at odds to try and find a way to support this because I, I, I think your your house could be positioned on here where well, you can have your six foot patio and we st still get this ten foot. Uh, there's there setback, there but, there are some lots that have minimum dimensions where the house itself 
will fit with the with the minimum 18 foot driveway in the front and the 15 foot rear for the house. The house fits on all the lots. There's no issues with the house whatsoever. It's just on some of the lots that have the minimum dimension where you will have the house at the 15 foot line. If we put a six foot patio on that, then the patio is nine foot from the rear of the property line and the cliff's edge design guides only allow to be 10 foot away. So we would exceed the, the limitation by a foot. And it's just on the one floor plan and it's only on selected lots. That, that hit those minimums. But we aren't we aren't making a judgment about the design guidelines. We're making a judgment based on our code, right? Actually, uh, uh, Cliff's Edge is exempt from Title 19 and uh, is uh, only under the standards of Cliff's Edge Development Agreement and the Cliff's Edge Development Standards. Uh, the Cliff's Edge Development Agreement and Standards have no uh, 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 mechanism for varying uh, the setbacks uh, in themselves. Uh, in, and what we've done is uh, come up with a possible solution by introducing a variance that is in compliance to a Title 19 uh, and offering developers the ability to seek that in order to possibly make changes. Uh, I think uh, in regards to the footprint that's there, I think there's a lot fit analysis uh, map in the backup that does a better job of describing what's occurring. And I think that's the map that we should be referring to versus the floor plan map that's there. Because it's a plot plan, it's a it's a lot fit analysis, and that's more accurate. If, if I may ask a question, Mr. Chairman, uh, is the applicant indicating that they wish to only be granted a variance for a nine foot setback where ten is required? That that is all I need. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that is an amendment to the application. Well, that's what he's telling. Well, me. no, that that's all I need. The, the re we set the application at the five foot at the request of the design review committee to ask for it to be in compliance with a Title 19 setback, but what I actually need on site is only a nine-foot setback. Director, Director Wheeler, how do we proceed? Are we... Oh, that's... He's asking for a... <laughs> he's asking for a lesser variance than has been noticed. Therefore, if the... Commission feels it's appropriate to grant a variance for nine where ten is required. You may certainly do so. Thank you. Okay. No more comments or permissions from uh, comments from the board. We'll entertain a motion on item 37. I'll make that motion. I'd like to uh, move to approve, uh, as we outlined there by uh, Ms. Wheeler, with the uh, with the change from ten feet or five feet request, but just one foot variance. Right, so we would add a condition then that the approval is for a nine foot rear yard setback where 10 is required. Okay. Is that for a limited number of lots? As noticed, yes. Okay, okay. so there's a motion on the floor with the uh, revised condition as read in by Director Wheeler and the motion by Commissioner um, Ellsworth. Please cast your vote for approval. And that motion has passed. Thank you, Commissioner. And that is final action in the absence of an appeal within 10 days. Thank you. Thank you. Items 38 and 39 are related items. Item 38 is variance 32153, applicant Verizon Wireless, owner Sun City Summerlin Community Association, Inc., to allow a 158-foot setback where residential adjacency standards require 180 feet for a proposed wireless communication facility stealth design on the west side of Del Webb Boulevard, approximately 225 feet north of Lake Mead Boulevard. Item 39, SUP 32151 for a 60-foot wireless communication facility stealth design. Staff? Mr. Chairman, the subject site currently contains an existing 63-foot tall wireless communication facility stealth design, also known as a monopole. The addition of the proposed 70-foot tall wireless communication facility of stealth design, uh, monopole, will intensify the visual impact on the existing single-family residences, residential homes to the north, as well as create a saturation of use within the area. Therefore, staff has recommended denial of the variance and special use permit. Please note additional letters of protest and support have been received after the publishing. Thank you. Thank you. Applicant? Good evening, Commissioners. Jason Freyer, 320 East Warm Springs Road, on behalf of the applicant, Verizon Wireless. Uh, just as a note, I noticed staff had said it was a 70-foot. It's actually 60-foot for a 60-foot wireless communication facility. Correct. We, yep. we had submitted for 60 and not 70. So I just wanted to make sure it that was correct. It is noticed at 60. Okay. Thank you. Um, what we're talking about, and I don't know if you can look into the overhead right here, is placing a new Verizon wireless site 
adjacent to an existing AT&T stealth monopole. Can you turn that 90 degrees? Is that better? Oh. There we go. Okay, Perfect. Cool. Okay. Which is located right here. Okay, it's, it's 63 foot. What Verizon is proposing is 60 foot. As you can tell, the site is littered with live, mature palm trees that are 45, 50 feet high. Uh, out of all the projects that I've done throughout this valley, I couldn't ask for a better blending purpose than right here on this parcel. It matches extremely well, as you can tell from this photo simulation. Okay, you have the existing AT&T and the proposed Verizon. Okay. It, it matches with the, extending, with the extending circumstances and surroundings. It, and our opinion is actually a very good fit. The reason for the variance is we are abutting the AT&T site. Literally, we can't move hardly any farther down on the parcel. We are pretty much abutting. We're about 10 feet away, leaving space for an existing tree and leaving space for a electrical meter. This is on the outside of the AT&T watt. I believe it's a three-foot clearance. So we are abutting AT&T as much as possible, the need for the variance. Sun City HOA has noticed this, has approved the design. Sun City Architectural Review Committee has also approved it, believing that this is a good location for this project. And we would ask for your approval here today. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anybody speak for or against this item, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments? Questions? There's no discussion. I'm ready to make a motion in regards to item number 38, variance 32153, in light of the approval by the Sun City Summerlin Community Association, and make a recommendation for approval of this uh, item. Motion on the floor for approval of item 38. Please cast your vote. <coughs> And that motion has passed. Item 39. Uh, special use permit 32151. Uh, same justification. Make a recommendation for approval. Subject to all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval of item 39. Thank you. The yes vote is for approval. Thank you. You know, my time is limited here, so I'm... <laughs> Thank Both you. items go forward to Council on February 4th. Thank you. Thank you. Item 40, RQR 31588, Applicant Lamar Advertising Owner Beard Family Trust, required review of an approved variance V013695 to allow a 40-foot tall, 14 by 48-foot off-premise sign billboard where such use was not permitted at 3920 West Sahara. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, staff notes that the that this parcel has uh, some future land use entitlements that will be coming forward to this board. As such, staff is recommending approval of this review with a three-year time limit uh, for a subsequent review. Thank you. Scott Nafsker, Lamar Advertising, 1863 Helm Drive. Uh, we, uh, we, we agree with staff's conditions and ask for your approval. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to speak for or against this? Please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on item 40. Um, I'd like to make a motion for approval with all staff's recommendations of RQR 31588. Motion on the floor for approval of item 40. Please cast your vote. to stay on them all year. And it goes forward to council on February 4th. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. You're one for one this year, Scott. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Item 42, SUP 31891, applicant. Um, is it Magna Maldonado, owner Refulio and Maria Martinez for a proposed mortuary at 2590 East Bonanza Road. Staff? Mr. Chairman, staff finds that the proposed use can be conducted in a compatible and harmonious manner with the surrounding area and therefore is recommending approval of the special use permit. Please note additional letters of protest and support have been received after the publishing. Thank you. Okay. Applicant? Um, Adriana Ventimiglia, 2590 East Bonanza, representing the applicant. Um, we agree with staff's recommendations and are here to answer any questions and request for approval. Okay. You know, the staff's recommendation, I believe, on this was for approval. Very good. 
Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anybody in the audience like to speak for or against this, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on item 42. Mr. Chairman, I'll follow the recommendation of the staff for uh, approval of agenda item number 42, SUP 31891. But before we vote, my colleague here is pulling up the picture on the screen. Um, and I'm assuming that's graffiti and that would be taken care of, is that correct? That's already been painted um, as of January 1st. Good, I appreciate that very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. Motion on the floor for, motions on the floor for approval of item 42. Please cast your votes. That motion has passed. Goes forward to council February 4th. Item 43, SUP 32144, applicant TCB Las Vegas LLC, owner Mustang Man LLC for a proposed supper club with a waiver to allow a zero foot separation from a church where 400 feet is required at 6750 West Sahara Avenue. Staff? Mr. Chairman, the proposed supper club fails to meet the minimum 400 foot distance separation requirement from an existing church and therefore is recommending denial. Please note additional letters of protest and support have been received after the publishing. Thank you. Thank you. Applicant? Good evening, um, Chairman and Commissioners. Lucy Stewart, 856 East Sahara, representing the property. Um, and this is the site of the formerly known as Props Mongolian Barbecue. Um, and then before that, it was East Side Mario's. And to the east of it was the Wild Oats, which when it, the new one was built, which is not new anymore, up at Tanay and Lake Mead, then it moved, and the Potter's House moved into that. Um, the, I guess when the Potter's House bought the property and moved in there, they had full knowledge that this property was developed and built and operated as a supper club. To the west of us is Hash House a Go Go, and before that it was um, La Salsa, I believe. To the west of that's a bank, and then west of that is Bollywood, who just opened up, and the gentleman who owns it says he's just waiting on his liquor license. And west of that is Asian Buffet, and they also have a bar. East of the um, Potter's House is um, car dealership, and then east of that is Sammy's Woodfire Pizza, which also has the tavern. So um, I don't know that us not being allowed to have a bar in our supper club really has an impact on the Potter's House. Um, Excuse me. Plus, the partners have tried to go over and knock on the door of the Potter's House, but they've not had much luck with it. Apparently, they're not. There's not anybody there during the day. They've not been able to catch them there to go and check on it. So, Very we'd good. ask for your approval. Thank you. The Buffet Asia is pretty good. I've been is there it? a few times. This is a public hearing. Anybody in the audience for or against this, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments from the board. If not, we'll entertain a motion on item 43. I just want to say I agree with Ms. Stewart on this, and I'd like to make a, a motion for approval with uh, all staff's recommendations of SUP 32144 um, with um, the motion for approval. And we agree to those conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Motion on the floor for approval of item 43. Please catch your vote. Before, um, one, one last thing. Before Mr. we vote, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm sure Ms. Stewart, you'll take care of it, but... When I was reviewing the staff report, uh, the staff report indicates that the uh, landscaping had either been removed or allowed to die in the landscape fingers um, surrounding the area. Um, if that's the case, can you make certain that that if, uh, I, I don't know whether it's the overall site itself, the, the you know, if you're just a tenant there or what, but if I'm not mistaken, the original approvals for the various zoning and the site plans required that landscaping and for whatever reason uh, apparently it's been allowed to wither or die. Okay, and I'd be happy to address that and the ha the handicap parking. It's actually there the guys coming out on Monday to stripe it. So it's just they've been cleaning up the site and you know, it's been sitting vacant for a while. Um, and then the landscaping, my understanding is they're going out to clean it up too and see, they wanted to wait a little bit to see what happens in the spring, if, if it's blooming or if it's really dead. So, um, but I guess I have two of the partners if they want to comment on I, that. I guess, or, you know, a lot of times we go through a lot of effort <laughs> to approve these things and the conditions for the original approvals call for a certain design. And we don't seem to have any mechanism 
you know, when, when unless a, an application comes forward, but sure. they they either don't comply or whatever. But if you could ensure that that is brought up to compliance, it would certainly Absolutely. be helpful. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you, Director Wheeler. If I may just note, we do an annual inspection, and landscaping is probably the primary issue that requires uh, correction. And so while that does not come forward to the commission, we do follow up on that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. There was a motion on the floor for approval of item 43. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. Thank you. Forward to Council on February 4th. Thank you very thank much you. and Happy New Year. Same to you. Item 45, RQR 3156. Oh, item 44. Pardon me. SUP 32148, Applicant Summerlin Massage, Nevada, LLC, Owner JMK Boca Park Pad, LLC, for a proposed 3,193 square foot massage establishment with waivers to allow for the establishment to remain open until 10 p.m., where 9 p.m. is the latest allowed, and to allow a zero foot distance separation from another massage establishment where 1,000 feet is the minimum distance required at 8950 West Charleston Boulevard, Suite 7. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, staff is unable to support this application as uh, due to the re uh, requested uh, waiver requirements and finds that this would be an oversaturation of use at this location and recommends denial. Please note we have received additional protests and additional uh, approvals uh, after publishing. Thank you. Applicant? Steve Cook, uh, 19506 North 41st Lane, Glendale, Arizona, 85308. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, I am the regional developer for Massage Envy for the state of Arizona and southern Nevada. Uh, I currently oversee 28 Massage Envies in the state of Arizona and eight here in the Las Vegas area, three in the city of Las Vegas, three in the county, and two in Henderson. Uh, I am the, also the franchisee for this proposed site in Summerlin. We've been trying to to get a site in Summerlin or that to serve that geographic trade area ever since we came to Las Vegas about four years ago. Finally, I found a good site in the local park uh, shopping center there at Charleston and, and Rampart. And uh, understand staff's uh, desire to or recommendation to deny this based upon the apparent uh, oversaturation, but uh, most meaningful to the uh, commission. Uh, I think I would like to address uh, the, the four uh, existing massage establishments as they are described in the denial report. Um, the one, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you can see where I'm pointing or not, but uh, the, the picture that's in front of you, the one on the lower right hand side is a hair and salon studio called The Loft, which is 95% uh, hair salon and nails. They do have two spa rooms. Uh, I talked with the owner of that uh, facility. Her name is Vicki. They rent those rooms out to estheticians, uh, one of which is also a massage therapist who occasionally does massage. So that, that is a massage establishment in name and as, as it appears on the, the records of the city of Las Vegas, but from all intents and purposes, it's 95% it's a, a, a hair salon. The, the facility uh, over at uh, the corner of Rampart and uh, Charleston is a Freddy's Car Wash. They, for some reason, have a massage establishment permit. Uh, I talked with the owner of that facility. Uh, they, they, they don't currently exercise it, don't have any plans to exercise it. His thought was that someday he might want to put a couple of... Uh, chair massage units in the car wash to be able to give uh, people waiting for their cars to get washed a, a, a five or ten minute chair massage. Uh, the facility just south of that, further south on Rampart uh, or, or Fort Apache is a Pilates and yoga studio called Body and Soul, uh, which again has uh, one uh, uh, massage facility with one uh, therapist who who will occasionally perform a massage. The only uh, facility that is on the side of the uh, Charleston where we are planning on locating is the Euphoria Salon, which is also in the Boca Park uh, development. And that, if anyone is familiar with Euphoria, is again primarily a hair, nails, 
uh, facials and uh, day spa type of resort. The charge is about $125 for a one hour therapeutic massage session. Massage Emmy's entire business philosophy is to make wholesome, legitimate therapeutic massage, uh, which is so beneficial to the human condition on so many uh, levels, both mind and body, uh, that, that people need to and want to be able to partake of it in a convenient, professional, affordable manner. And so we've come up with a, de with a business pl a development plan that provides for a membership program that makes uh, getting a massage on a regular and frequent basis very, very affordable. None of the other establishments around there uh, offer massage as their only business. It's a, it's a minor ancillary business. And my understanding of the intent behind the thousand foot separation is to prevent the, the situation like we have in many parts of the city where you've got old massage parlor type of establishment after one after another after another after another and it becomes uh, very deleterious to the image of the city. Massage Envy is, is strictly the, the white horse good guys who are trying to bring legitimate wholesome therapeutic massage to everybody on an affordable convenient professional type of basis. So I don't think that, you know, while it appears like there's an oversaturation when you look at the, the actual businesses that are out there, none of them specialize uh, in massage. All of them offer massage for over $100 on an ancillary type of basis. It's not convenient. It's not affordable. And uh, so we would ask that you respectfully overturn <laughs> the staff's recommendation to denial. I'll be happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who want to speak for or against this? Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. James Grindstaff, 9440 West Sahara Avenue, representing the owners of Boca Park Shopping Center. We uh, certainly like Massage Envy. We have a Massage Envy in our Grand Canyon Center that we also own at Flamingo and Fort Apache. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, however, what we have here is a use that's being applied for that is in violation of several issues. The original purchase and sales agreement with the original owner of that lot, with the uh, OEA, and also with the uh, master development plan that was agreed to between the City of Las Vegas and Boca Park Marketplace. Uh, section 1.4 of that development agreement, uh, which is recorded with the county office and with the city, <coughs> excuse me, um, states that um, that the re review and approval by architectural review, use permit variance, or other submittal process is required by the City of Las Vegas Planning and Development. However, the submittal requirements outlined above must be reviewed by the Boca Park ARC prior to pursuing the required submittal by the City of Las Vegas. Uh, there was never any application made to the Boca Park um, ARC. Um, if it had been, uh, we would have denied it based on the issues that as part of our uh, sell for the Euphoria Day Spa, uh, they have an exclusive for many issues, one of them being massage. Once again, that's all included in the OEAs, in the development agreement, and then when we sell a pad like we did with this one on the corner, uh, those documents are all recorded and are part of the sales and purchase agreement. So as the owner of the land, uh, we would like to have this application withdrawn because we feel it violates both the development agreement from the City of Las Vegas and the OEAs. Thank you. What is Thank you. The Mr. Chairman, if I may. I was going to just chide you in, Mr. <laughs> yeah, no, to me, I, let, let me, uh, if I may, Chairman, let me say this, this sounds to me like a dispute between two private parties. Uh, there is no standing for Mr. Grindstaff and his uh, people that he's representing to come and ask for a withdrawal of this application. Uh, you have an applicant here. You may act on that application as you see fit. With all due respect to the city attorney, uh, the master development plan and development standards were a document that was created by our architect at the time, uh, submitted to the city of Las Vegas, and agreed to as part of the conditions for granting the zoning, the design development, and the site development plan review for the Boca Park Marketplace. So this isn't an agreement between just two parties. It also includes the city of Las Vegas. Chairman, I've already given you my advice. The advice is you can move forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you. Complete your comments. Yes, thank sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, and sir, please come on up. My name is Donna Catafemo, and uh, I reside at 2952 Soft Horizon Way in Las Vegas, um, in the Summerlin area. But I'm representing Jed LLC, 
which is the pad that the Euphoria Salons and Day Spa sit on at Boca Park. And massage is a large part of the business. We also um, have several, we strongly, strongly oppose this. We have several concerns. First of all, the shopping center has limited parking. This is supposed to be sitting right on the street, right on Charleston. They didn't mention, and first of all, there was a, um, I have to make a correction. You must have saved me for last because I'm starting to get a little heated here. Our massages are not $120. Um, we have reasonable massage um, services that we offer. But uh, regardless, there's a massage school right across the street, which also offers massage. So it's not just those number of salons and day spas in the, within a mile radius, but right across the street. I have a huge concern over services done after 8 o'clock. We have a bar next to us. We have, um, unfortunately, later out, uh, evening hours, several people that stay and um, whatever they're doing in the parking lot. We have concerns over the, um, <laughs> it's sad, the things we find in our parking lot. We're right next to a bar. So Front the, seat car massage, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we have limited parking. The after hours is a concern. We don't need any other massage uh, services. They're about 200 feet. I'm not really good at judging distance, but roughly. Excuse me, I'm Marty Weaver. I'm the director of sales for Euphoria Salons and Day Spas. Um, this establishment is approximately... Le it's definitely less than the, the 1,000 feet that they're asking to wave. Um, it is approximately about, I would say, 500 feet from our establishment. Very good. Thank you. Are you finished with your comment? <laughs> I thought you saved me for last because I get winded. Yeah, I, it's just we strongly oppose it, and we have several major concerns with it. Yes. Very good. You, Thank your you. Your concerns are now on the record. <clears throat> we'll close the public hearing. If nobody else likes to speak on these, and we entertain some comments or questions from the commission, or we'll have a motion on item 44. Mr. Vice Chairman Trowbridge. Yeah, my, my reaction to this after listening to the input is the Mr. Grindstaff that spoke, I think he was alluding to uh, something like restraint of trade or something like that. Uh, I think that's probably a an issue that best resolved other than at this particular site. The two individuals that, uh, that just spoke, Ms. Kat FEMA, has uh, some legitimate concerns regarding the separation. You know, when it's presented that the massage is a ancillary activity, and that being the primary justification for a waiver of a thousand foot, I can I can accept that. But it's, she's testifying that that's not, not the case. The existence of the massage school across the street probably also falls within the thousand feet. I, I was not aware of that. You have, yes, and and you have been before us before and have presented your case regarding the the types of business, the massage envy, and, and their uh, their absolutely the types of, of operations that we're we're proud to have and accommodate. But I think because of these two issues that came up today, I think we'd be better served if. Uh, you were to let us abate this or request that it be abated for um, a few weeks and let you see if you could work out the details with the two people if you've got a yeah, part on this particular site. Just completely just not aware you, of yes. the and I, and I think that if we could address this in a, uh, away from the DS fashion, you would be able to come with some kind of resolution. You know, so uh, based upon that, uh, I would make a, a motion that we continue this item for 30 days and give you the opportunity to, to uh, discuss it with the two people here tonight. Thank okay. you. Accept that. I'm in agreement with Yep, absolutely. There's a motion to hold item 44 for 30 days. That would be until the February 12th. February 12th meeting. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Item 45, RQR 31565, Applicant Lamar Outdoor Advertising, Owner Rancho Park Residential LLC, required review of an approved special use permit U0059-01 for two 14 by 48 foot off-premise signs billboards at the northeast corner of Smoke Ranch Road and Decatur Boulevard. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the site is now, uh, the, the, these billboards are now located within a site that is hard zoned RPD 20. Uh, we staff finds that uh, the billboards are no longer in conformance to Title 1914 as billboards are not allowed in a residentially zoned property. 
Uh, this was done under uh, recent previous action uh, by the by the city council, and staff is recommending denial of this request. <coughs> okay, Mrs. Napster, see if you can go two for two here. <laughs> Scott Napster, Lamar Advertising, 1863 uh, Helm Drive. Uh, we understand that this is uh, this is going residential, and uh, although we'd like to keep the signs as long as we can, uh, accept your uh, recommendation. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Would anybody like to speak for or against this item? Please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the board? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman. First staff, I know that we, we approved this as residential. Wasn't there a part of that approval that required this board to come down when they built? Uh, there is a uh, uh, condition upon that, uh, upon uh, prior to the issuance of building permits, that the build boards be removed. Is on is on right, the SDR, SDR. correct? And, and that is in the uh, is condition number four that's before you tonight, if approved. Um, and for clarification, please, uh, Director Wheeler, does that mean that if this item is approved, once building permits are pulled for the residential properties, these signs would go down? Yes, that's condition okay. number four. So if we were to vote for approval. In the applicant agreed to the conditions for approval, once building begins, the billboards come down. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Mr. So Napster, you're in agreement with these conditions? I am. Okay. The applicant's in agreement with the conditions. Uh, do we have a, any more comments on item 45? If not, we'll take, entertain a motion. Regards to item 45, RQR 31565, make a recommendation for approval, subject all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval. Please cast your vote. Is there a time limit on this prior to? It is three years. Three years. For the next review. Or, or the construction yes. issue. Right? Okay. Does the, I guess this is a question for the, you may not know this, but the site development plan review, does that expire? Like, let's say they decide to can the uh, development. Um, yes, is there the, a point where that expires? Uh, the site development uh, in question is referenced in condition number four and of course at some point if that site development ceased to exist then that is referenced in the condition. Yeah, I, I guess is there a point where it does or a time limit on that or where they have to come in and renew or? Yes. Okay. Motion on, the, been made. motion on the floor for approval. Please cast your votes. That motion has passed. It goes forward to council on February 4th. Okay, thank you. You're a trendsetter this year, huh? <laughs> two for two. That concludes all of our public hearing business, all of our um, <coughs> move on to director's business. We've taken care of item 46. Next item is item 47, which will be the election of the 2009 Planning Commission officers. Um, I just want to say that I'm at the end of my one-year uh, tenure as chairman. I just wanted to... Um, Thank the commission for, for electing me in 2008. It's been a pleasure to, to, to guide the meetings, and um, it sure has been a pleasure from the residents of Ward 5 to have a representative as chairman of the board. So I'd just like to thank the commissioners for that as well. Uh, now we'll go ahead and, um, Mr. Lewis, I believe the proper protocol is to for the chairman to make a nomination for chairman, and we will vote, and we will um, then take nominations from the floor. Yeah, you can call for nominations, okay. and then we're going to vote, and whoever gets the most vote wins. <laughs> there you go. Very good. No Chad involved? Well, we, we can. <laughs> Let's hope not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a nomination as chairman from the floor for president. Uh, my nomination would be Glenn Trowbridge. Is there any other nominations for for chairman? I'm sorry. If it was president, if it was, announcements. If it was president, I'd have to go for myself to be court. Obama-like, I guess. Um, any other nominations for chairman at this time? Seeing the, seeing none, we'll close the nomination for chairman. I'll ask everybody at this time to please cast your vote for Glenn Trowbridge as the 2009 chairman. Please cast your vote. And that has passed. I would now take nominations for vice chairman. Vice so chairman, oh, I'm sorry. I would like to make a motion to nominate uh, 
Commissioner Trowbridge for the 2009 Vice Chairman. Commissioner? I mean, sorry, Mr. <laughs> they both start with T. He is so good, he can do so many jobs. <laughs> that man's everywhere. Commissioner Truesdale. There is a motion on the floor for Commissioner Truesdale for Vice Chairman. Are there any more nominations for Vice Chairman? Seeing none, we'll cast our votes for Commissioner Truesdale for Vice Chairman. Please cast your vote. I'm still thinking. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and that motion has passed. Um, now I'd like to cast a motion for who's going to go get the water for these gentlemen. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Seeing none, we'll close. Um, that concludes our elections for the 2009 officers of the Planning Commission. Congratulations, Chairman. Um, Trowbridge, congratulations, Vice Chairman Truesdale. Also, we had uh, a vacancy. Um, Commissioner Steinman um, is, has now taken a position as an interim city councilman, which means that his position on the uh, commission is now open. Um, if we kind of looked at this like uh, one of those real-life sitcoms, we would be the Big Brothers group. And so on January 26th, uh, a Big Brother is January 22nd, a Big Brother is going to come back. Um, we just like to say um, welcome back, uh, Michael Buckley, who is probably at home viewing this to, to get himself back and used to seeing these. But we welcome you back to the uh, commission, and we'll see you at our January 22nd meeting. Um, if there's no further business, I'd like to adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Yes. I would like to reconvene the meeting. I just love being chairman. I'm not going to let this in. So citizens' participation. Citizens' participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. No subject may be acted upon by the Planning Commission unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium and give your name for the record, the amount of discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Mr. Teddy Russell, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Chairman Goins. Uh, my name is Teddy Russell, a resident of Las Vegas. Your world delivered. Uh, and I approve all of these uh, advances. Uh, did I get here at the right time? Thank you so much, and have a great evening. Thank you. And if I may, on behalf of staff, and the, thank you, Mr. Goins, for your chairmanship and your work and attending all the briefings and all of that. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <sighs> Meetings adjourned.